All right, guys, today I'm going to show you how the Quick Set Smart Key Decoder works. Um, the way the tool operates is um, it actually, just like a key blank, lifts all the wafers and all the pins and all the wafers to the maximum, uh, to, to the highest position, so that you can look through these little windows here. And you will be looking directly at the wafers. And depending on where they're hooked in, you see different parts of them. Let's see, I'm a little too close to focus. Um, so if you're hooked into the bottom one, which would be a number six, what you see through the window is that oval cutout at the bottom that's used for rekeying. And um, if you hook it into a number five, you can still see it, but it, um, it only makes up about half of what you see. Um, if you hook it into a number four, um, you will only see that uh, cutout at the very bottom. If you hook it into a number three, you won't see anything because you will be looking directly uh, at that flat part. And then once you come to the number two and the number one, you begin to start the uh, the notches, the very bottom notches that the that you would hit hook into for number six or number five. Um, so let's see if I can show you this because I do have one of those craptacular master cable quick set locks right here. And um, obviously, I can't really show you what's going on here. Um, so I came up with another solution. I bought one of those $5 um, scope cameras. And uh, I took a couple of flat pieces of metal and I just clamped it together with one of those replaceable blades that you should be able to pick up for maybe $25 to $30. And um, this allows me to actually look into the lock with my smartphone. So hopefully we'll be able to decode this thing together. Um, Let's see. Now, we've come up to the first window here. And uh, let me see if I can focus you in on this better. Okay. Yeah, you should be able to see right here um, that this is our wafer right here. And we're looking at this round cutout right here and it's it's pretty high up so that's telling me that we're looking at a number six um, now if I keep moving you will see um, that piece that holds the sidebar and the wafers on you might even see the back of the sidebar here but don't get confused the first thing that you see when you come up to the window, that is your wafer. Now let's go over to the next window. Okay, and we're, we're looking at the exact same thing. We see that um, round cut out fairly high up, so we have another number six. Let's go to cut number three. Okay. All right, let's see if we can brighten this up a little bit. Okay. Now, obviously you can't see much. You're seeing this big, um, big flat part. So we're looking at a number three. Let's keep moving to the number four cut. All right. 
and I hope the pan camera picks this up, but I can clearly see the flat part of the wafer right here. And then I can make out the round cutout at the bottom. Um, but it, it only makes up about 25% as compared to the flat part I see. So this is a number four. If this were a number five, um, you would see about half of that cut out and um, half of the flat part. Now let's continue to the last one and yeah, hopefully that's bright enough. Getting tons of glare here. I should have set this up better. Hopefully you can see it anyway. So we're once again looking at the flat part right here. And it's... There we go. It's a little difficult to see. But it's easier when I move it around a bit. Right up top here. That, I believe, is the the bottom notch, so that is where the wafer would, uh, the, the pin would hook into the wafer if it were number six. So, and since I can see that and I can't see the next one, we are looking at a number two here. And, uh, yeah, when, when you're doing the scoping, once again, don't get confused if you look at something like that. This is not a wafer. When I, when I started out, I would always um, interpret this as a number, number six or a number five. And you need to back up a little to the beginning of the window. Um, you really need to be uh, knowing what you're looking at. All right. Well, um, I'm going to put a cube lamp into my pack-a-punch and then I'll We'll test the combination. So we had six, six, three, four, and two. Now let's see. All right. And it's correct. Alrighty. Um, even though this works, um, you get a, a much better picture with the original tool. The only thing about the tool is that it uses button cells. And whenever you need them, they're dead. So... Uh, Make sure you get some extra ones. They're the Energizer, Energizer 357. Alrighty. Well, um, I hope this helps some of you guys. If you need anything else, um, if you need me to explain anything else, just shoot me a message and get yourself one of these.